<laughs> no worries. Thanks, Natalie. So here's a lesson. So it's funny. Everywhere I go, doesn't matter what community I go into, I do the lesson. So it's Radhika Sitsa by Eason. So Sitsa by Eason. Um, it's it's not really hard. You just read it phonetically, 12 letters. It's not too bad. Um, yeah. First of all, thank you to um, Feds for putting this together, and not only for coming up with this vision of taking a politician to school. Um, it's really great that we are starting to make and build those bonds that break down the barriers between what is a politician, the, the, the vision of a politician and um, the everybody else. Um, I like to think that I'm part of everybody else and that's why I will make a good politician because I understand what my community, the needs of my community and the work that I was already doing in the community. And I, it's funny, when I first got here, um, <clears throat> Many of the students I was talking to, they're like, oh my god, you're so young. Um, what made you want to be a politician? Like, how did you do it? And I was like, really, it's because of the community development work that I was already doing. The working in the community and then without the political support, you really can't um, get lasting, sustainable change or impact without having support from the political levels. And so I decided to run, and I'm very excited to be the post-secondary education. Chris, don't mind, just died. Oh, we're back. The post-secondary education critic with the official opposition. And um, Natalie wanted to hear some of the initiatives that I'm working on. And uh, first thing I did within the first uh, two months is table the, my private member's bill, which is calling for a national post-secondary education strategy uh, that would create a post-secondary education bill. This would enshrine principles of high standard education, which relate to the environment uh, within the university or college experience. So faculty to student ratios, um, academic freedom and integrity, those kinds of issues, um, make ensure that post-secondary education stays publicly funded and administered. So making sure that your post-secondary education experience is going to be a not-for-profit experience, and it's not about corporations coming in and trying to make money off of the students. And of course, the third principle that would be enshrined in this bill is accessibility. Ensure that post-secondary education is accessible to every single person who's qualified to attend an institute of post-secondary education and wants to, that socioeconomic barriers are not a reason or not a reason that that prevents people from being able to pursue the, any type of educational future that they want to pursue. Um, so that was a little bit of my talk about my um, bill that I've tabled, and I'm really looking forward to coming back to the campuses to talk more about the bills. And uh, I've started reaching out to the, uh, the feds, but also all of the other students unions across the country to ensure that we are we have an open two-way communication so that I can know what type of changes or what you like or don't like about the bill, but what you'd like me to do moving forward with respect to post-secondary education and the direction that you'd like to see the federal government take. I think that it's important that the federal government actually take a stand on post-secondary education and feel that that really has been lacking and there has not really been much leadership on the on post-secondary education. So. I am here to listen, and I know that um, the, the member of provincial parliament who was speaking earlier mentioned that uh, students came out in high numbers during this election. I, I must say that uh, I really, really um, had a lot of, I, I, I uh, benefited from many of the students in the riding of Scarborough Rouge River that came out. I had over 300 um, youth volunteers on my team and really, the youth and the seniors were the engine behind my campaign. And so that goes to show that when the people are united and when the people really want to make a change in a community, you can. And being in a university town, um, university city, region, what's it called? It's a region. Um, but being in a university town, you really have the ability to make that type of impact. I, I know this from my own personal experience from when I was at Carleton on the Students' Union Executive, and we really were able to get the word out within the university and pull the vote with the students and really make an impact on our local community, our local city elections, municipal elections, and the
the federal and provincial elections locally as well. Um, so thank you once again to everybody for Feds, Natalie and the rest of the team for organizing it and uh, for all of you guys for coming out and I look forward to continuing the dialogue afterwards. Thank you again. Thank you.